New York City teacher Jamel Mims faces up to a year in prison for non-violently protesting stop and frisk. In a series of actions starting last year, protesters briefly and symbolically blocked the entrances to police stations. The actions were highly orderly, with police in full control, and no police operations visibly disrupted. Nonetheless, what appears to be vindictiveness Charges against MIMS and three other organizers have been repeatedly stepped up. Even as public awareness and condemnation of stop and frisk have risen dramatically. We spoke with MIMS just as he awaited word of the rescheduling of his hearing due to Hurricane Sandy. Um, and this was the third and culminating action of a series of citywide civil disobedience protests that really raised the level of resistance to stop and frisk you know, around New York. A year ago, you had a situation where very few people knew that stop and frisk went on. Um, and those who knew about it thought that there was nothing that they could do about it or that it was somehow it was only because of them um, or, or that they, they somehow were individually liable for having been stopped. And, you know, because people were willing to put something on the line to challenge that and actually raise the profile of that and, and resist that, you know, it, it inspired people, it inspired people there in Harlem and Brownsville and in Queens, you know, you know, it inspired people, you know, across, it inspired people across the country to know that there was a core of people who were taking this up and who were actually determined to fight against it and to wage resistance against it. Um, and so again, now taken in this context, we have a year later where you have politicians lining up on the left and right to figure out what to do with this policy while essentially keeping it intact. On the 11th hour of the pretrial motions, the prosecutor enters in, you know, not officially, but enters in uh, simply into the way that he, that, that he in, into the charge sheet, um, the phrase acting in concert, uh, which then implied accessorial liability. Um, and this is the thing where, you know, again, they threw that in there because if they, they think that if they can sink one, they can sink everybody. All the time you're hearing this trial coming from the judge that stop and frisk is not on trial, stop and frisk is not on trial. Well, objectively in society, stop and frisk is on trial. And it's on trial in the popular conscience of people in New York and all across the nation. You know, this is breaking open a discourse on mass incarceration. And, you know, historically situate this, you know, with the equivalence that we look back at the black liberation movement of the 60s. And it has that kind of urgency and moral imperative. You know, we're acting with the same moral imperative of, you know, of abolitionists who are working to stop you know, who are, who are looking at targeting a specific policy, but looking to stop it, an entire system of racialized oppression. And that's actually, those are actually the terms of this, of, of this trial. And with, you know, what winning or losing this trial means and what it ultimately, ultimately means in society. For updates on the cases against the Stop, Stop and Frisk defendants, visit StopMassIncarcerations.org.